real. Yeah. He know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot of laugh. And who the ball? Who the ball? So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. And you gon' learn a day, you gon' learn a day how your team they play, play, they play, yeah. how they play, boy, you gon' learn a day how your team they play, they play, they play, how they play, play, yeah. We represent that swag. That me yak, and let me say, say, what's up to Tennessee, stay, stay. You tune into the agency of Sports Lab with Dr. Bill, Mike and Charles, Charles, and Knocking Time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to episode 73 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that covering the sporting HBCU diaspora, all things HBCU sports from institutions large and small. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture and HBCU athletic aesthetics to help HBCU alumni to understand the business of HBCU sports. I'm sure I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with co-host Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. We are filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to our KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Again, welcome to Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mm. With that, as uh, we're waiting on Charles, looks like he's having a little technical difficulty. Hopefully we can bring him back in. But we do have the superstar of the show, <laughs> Mr. Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Mr. Mike Washington. Uh, Make me right. feel good now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need you now, Mike. You, got to <laughs> you, deliver. you need me now. <laughs> okay. well, what what's going say? on, Doc? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. What they say? How you like me now? Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh man. So so welcome, 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 all the fans, all the all the tweet, uh, twitters, Twitter followers, all of the Facebook followers. Definitely, I, I share. Uh, Dr. Cavill, uh, echo Dr. Cavill's thoughts. Welcome to the show again this week. So, with that, yeah. uh, Mike, if you would go ahead and give me some news of the day, man. So, news so we of got, the week. Oh yeah, we got plenty of news. Uh, first of all, starting off with in this age of COVID nineteen, the big news of the day, courtesy of several sources. Of course, uh, you saw it on HBCU Game Day. You saw it on several. Uh, if you're like me and you have sons, I have se- you know you know Twitter. You saw it on Instagram. Multiple uh, North Carolina A&T students test positive for COVID-19. So this was uh, since their return to the campus on July 6. All four students are asymptomatic. Big surprise, right? So if mm-hmm. the students have university housing and have tested positive, they're being isolated. That's according to protocol. It is not clear as to what sports. However, there are reports that one of the students is a football athlete. Um, There have been numerous, numerous reports, but a source told HBCU Game Day, I have a friend of mine that I used to work with in the corporate world that is a big alum of North Carolina A&T that also shared the same thing, that they believe that two, one to two of the, uh, for athletes, for football players. So, nevertheless, so when they come on campus, you have to realize that these students live in groups. Um, but, uh, some of these groups are six, eight to ten people. So they're conducting workouts. They're conducting other scheduled meetings. The, the school does, uh, in all fairness, have protocols in place, such as temperature and symptom screen, uh, screening, mask are mandatory in public, and of course, there are protocols for the coaching, but it's big news. And as schools go into bringing athletes into play early, you know, you, you're going to have this instance and students and universities are going to have to be able to be prepared to address a scenario like this. So that's my first piece of news for the day, Dr. Bill. Well, that's a bombshell. I mean, that's a lot of um, no. news and extremely important to a lot of people. Um, And I think the way that you broke it down was really uh, important to frame it in a discussion. With that, I guess the question a lot of people have, 
um, obviously this pretty much becomes the first HBCU. Are you hearing any other HBCUs uh, in regards to um, players in specifically testing positive for COVID-19? No, nothing that has been confirmed. I think maybe uh, uh, Charles may be able to have uh, with his connects a few that uh, few connects and, and maybe some players that have tested positive. Um, I have I have heard of a few players. The instant thing, the instant interesting thing is that uh, a lot of the universities are taking kind of the corporate approach because of HIPAA laws. They're not naming names. They're not and in certain instances they're not naming sports. Um, so I don't have any names at this point, but I am hearing rumors that in uh, North Carolina A and T is not the only school. It's just the most breaking institution at this point in time. Yeah, no doubt about it. I'm glad you uh, bring that up in terms of that case of what's going on there. But with that, let's uh, get into it and look at some more. What other news do you have on the table that uh, is big across the HBCU landscape this week? Yeah, so we got uh, kind of switching gears. We, we, we go from COVID-19, we go to acquisition. Delaware State will be the first officially historically black college in it. Uh, institution to acquire an institution that is not an HBCU. Uh, Delaware State signed an acquisition agreement with Wesley College, which is a private liberal arts college, roughly uh, two or three miles from the uh, Delaware State campus. So discussion between the schools began around March or so, and Delaware State President Tony uh, Allen said in an email that, you know, it, you know it's, a, it's a positive move. No, there was a case to be made that a university like Delaware State should be focusing on other, other things. I thought it was quite interesting that his input was, well, this is other things for for, for us. And I thought that was a good, uh, very good point. Uh, that was on Twitter. That was on uh, uh, HBCU Game Day. That was on HBCU Sports. So I thought that was quite a pointed uh, point. You look historically, uh, HBCUs have tried to acquire other campuses, um, you'll know that uh, Southern University um, has acquired several campuses uh, over the past. Uh, one that kind of goes under the rug and goes unnoticed is at one time Fort Valley State had offered to purchase and buy and incorporate Morris Brown at one time. And for whatever reason, that yeah, fell through the cracks at well. So here we have Delaware State. Now there's some things that, that need to happen. And for, you know, Delaware State, you know, they have to make sure that they acquire the funds. They have to get approvals. They, there's uh, board accreditation approvals and reviews that take place. But right now, it looks like this is going to happen. And this is big across the HBCU landscape. No doubt about it. That's that's huge and significant. And while people may say, is that is that sports related? Certainly, and from when we seen a different type of framework, which we would call more in the business world, Mike, and I know you are like this, was the merger between um, Albany, Albany, yep. as you like to say, Albany, uh, and the junior college there that increased their enrollment, which means that you could maybe think of doing different things for sports. It also, um, in that case, you had some sports programs at the school that they merged with, uh, where they brought into the portfolio <clears throat> of Albany State. Um, and so this framework, while obviously a lot of the eyes on the academic side, rightfully so, um, there are some components in regards to looking at uh, sports uh, that may be associated with Wesley College and how, if there is, how do you integrate or how do you increase the number of sports you have at Delaware State uh, to create that niche framework that is there. So. Uh, the point that you bring that up of importance is certainly there. With, with that, it looks like we got Charles back in as the, Gremlins, as the Gremlins tried to uh, mess him up there, but uh, not, to be dis not to be disturbed. <laughs> you know how those Jackson State Tigers and Texas Southern oh, Tigers, there are, we go. <laughs> they, they, they fight through it. They find a way to win. You got to. You got to. Yeah. Not so, the Tiger Prowl. So Mike was talking about some news, obviously, with North Carolina A&T, if you would, in regards to the COVID-19 cases that uh, college athletes have caught in that area. And then he just talked about the uh, Delaware State acquisition that uh, is pretty much formalized with Wesley College in that area. 
And so we kind of covered that. But do you have some additional news outside of that that you wanted to share with the listeners? Uh, sure. And this comes courtesy of uh, Southern University Athletics. The American Baseball Coaches Association has announced uh, eight individuals uh, to be inducted into the ABCA Hall of Fame in January 2021. And among the inductees is legendary Southern uh, University player and coach, Coach Roger Cador. He'll be going into that class. And you talk about a, a stellar career with Coach Cador, uh, just a legend, uh, Southern University baseball. Uh, you're talking about a, a, a gentleman over the course of 33 seasons. Uh, Cador's teams won two HBCU national championships in 2003 and 2005, 14 SWAC championships, made 11 NCAA regional appearances, and along the way racked up 13 SWAC Coach of the Year awards, coached 10 uh, players to All-America honors, and 62 players were drafted to MLB teams, including the 2003 yeah. Golden Spikes winner, Ricky Weeks. So kudos to Coach Roger Cater. Man, you, you yeah. did a great job of just laying out that resume where it looks like there's no question that he was in the right place to be a Hall of Famer there. Um, I had forgot, though, and I like that you brought that up, that he actually played at Southern as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was uh, in the brain system after every game. Yeah, so, so. yeah, so he was nice on the field as well uh, in terms of not just managing all those accolades that you speak of, most notably the championship and Ricky Weeks in terms of uh, of producing him, many other players, but, you know, you're talking about the Golden Spikes. You're talking about the equivalent of the Heisman uh, Trophy and the Heisman Trust, as they like to call it around the world, in the football arenas or – in the basketball arenas, that's, you know, equivalent um, to um, uh, the Naismith Award in, in a lot of ways or, or uh, um, in, in those kind of accolades that a lot of people get. So that, that's big time. Uh, I was so Huge. happy to see that news. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to a gentleman here uh, that is a behind the scenes type of guy. Uh, some people may remember him. I call him Ruff, Professor Ruffin Bell. To give uh, a lot of credit, you know, Texas Southern University has the sport management program, right? And you, uh, Charles Bishop, had a chance to go into the Masters of Science in Sports Studies and the Sports Leadership Program. Well, the incubator to that program uh, was designed in a lot of ways based on what I call, again, Professor, Professor Ruffin Bell, uh, as the work he did at Coppin State in developing their sport management program. Hmm. They have now been moved into the business school and they've updated to some degree, but the original sport management program that was at Coppin State is the incubator for what I got done at Texas Southern University. He went on to get his master's degree at um, Grambling State in athletic administration uh, became an athletic director. Now he's back at Coppin State. But he was the original one that did the blackcollegebaseball.com website. Mm -hmm. So he's a uh, behind-the-scenes guy, voter in the College Hall of Fame, and he did a lot of, of the push, I'm, I'm sure, with a lot of other people. Uh, but I just wanted to give some credit to Ruffin Bell, somebody that quietly finds a way to get a lot of stuff done. He's promised me, as I keep needling about uh, this doctorate that I'm working on at Texas Southern University at athletic administration and sports leadership if we can get it done he's promised that he would be the first one to apply for that program and be in there and I know Charles and I, I would be surprised if Mike says hold on now you know I want a piece of that too Charles has already <laughs> dipped his toe in that education I mean in the uh, doctorate at, uh, in the curriculum instruction program we're trying to needle Mike Washington he's such a busy man he says, hold up, don't don't go too fast, though. I'm coming. I'm, I, I am coming, believe me, I'm coming. <laughs> but I Hurry would be, up, man. I, I would be <laughs> remiss. <laughs> yeah, Charles said he needs somebody to tag along. I would be uh -huh. remiss if I didn't give a shout-out, a brilliant shout-out to Ruffin Bell uh, in regards to that. As I do that and kind of chime on, let me give some other folks, um, as we like to do, some love that has joined us on the show before I go back to you, Charles, for some other news of the day uh, and then return it to Mike as he got the show out early in the show. I told, you yeah. know, uh, with two straight, <laughs> I, I leaned on him a little bit for the team. As we would say, I leaned on him on the shield a little bit. You know, we got to throw it in there. Every now and then you got to do that. <laughs> just, 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 just saying, you know, he is big brother, you know, big brother to me. So Chuck, Chuck Hunt, 
uh, solid A&T athletes who tested positive jumped in here. Tyler Carr giving us some love from HBCU game day. The boys are back on the air. Yes, indeed. This yeah, week, Jimmy L. Wilson has found a way to give, get in here, man. He's been having to catch us uh, as things have taken him away from the live, but he's with us live now, so give him some love. Then we got uh, G. Boom Holly, who's manning the controls. He's done a lot, so if you would, go yeah. and check us out. Subscribe on YouTube. We're on YouTube now, and a lot of that effort is because of G. Boom Holly, as we like to call him, uh, and, uh, and one of the big-time 3 P tailgaters. Tailgating uh, extraordinaire. Yes, that uh, it was emphasis and part of that original three uh, that got that going as we uh, now partner with Joe K, uh, Roland Austin, and a couple of other great ones out there in regards to uh, partnership in the 3P tailgate as we expanded that uh, and give you some more updates on what's going on there. So just wanted to show some love. Frankie Nelson is on here. Anthony Weston, that big-time Alabama a and Bulldogs. Roy is always extraordinary for our productionists on this side. Uh, Brandon Bailey, big time DJ, uh, Mega Man on mm -hmm. here. And let me make sure I give uh, love to Holly as a member of Phi Beta Sigma as well as Roy. So we got, we're going to share the love. You know, that's what we do. Carlos no Brown is on here with his no. show on Saturday. Man, no. we got some of the big time stakeholders on it. Man, follow us. Man, what's going on? It, it must be some hot HBCU news out there. We're going to give it to you. <laughs> We're going to hey, give G. it to you like y'all want. Hey, hey, G. Boom, if you're watching, what do you see behind me, baby? What do you see behind me? <laughs> <laughs> also, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say follow us on Twitter uh, at um, Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We've created that Twitter, too. And so not only can you follow me on Twitter, now you can follow us as the show on Twitter. And so we are expanding the platform. Make sure you go to BCSN. Uh, we have an app. Now you can get an app for your show. Go download the app, BCSN, the app. Go in there, and that's part Black College Sports Network. And you can listen to us all around the world. Watch us on the video just on your phone if you can't follow us on Facebook Live. And don't forget, for those driving around the city, you are listening to us on KQH 1230 AM. So as you see, you have no excuse to find us and get that HBCU sports news of the day. Just like last week, I came across a new brother. You know, them alphas just find a way to find us in a lot of ways. Out of Howard University, they played basketball with uh, uh, Howard University when Coach Allen was up there. So I'm going to give him a little bit of love, too. Uh, he was finding a way to get it done. So that, that was pretty nice. That's Brian Terry has a twin sister. That played, he played basketball. Make sure I get that right. He played basketball at Howard wearing 55. Then his sister, Shelly Terry, wearing 55, played at Alabama A&M from 99 to 03. So we got folks that just find love for us everywhere. And no before doubt. I get all these shout outs, <laughs> the first coach that came down and gave me love, I told you, Bulldogs, women, I knew it. soccer. Look I knew at that. it. I knew it. Coach Stevens over there at Alabama A&M putting in work. So if you want love, just send me a text. You know, hit us in the private chats. We do hats. You know, I got the fam. You hat back there. Swag is always going to get love. But if you want hats, shirts, send it to Charles Bishop, Mike Washington. Let me show you the kind of love that I get out here. Charles Bishop, what shirt size do you wear? Uh, I'm an XL, Dr. Cavill. Mike Washington, and let me do this right. Professor Bishop, since we talking about the <laughs> seminar lab. Professor Bishop, what sh size shirt you wear? Uh, Dr. Cavill, I'm an XL, sir. There you go. Professor Washington, since we talking about the sports lab, we in the lab mixing it up. Professor Washington, what shirt size do you wear? I'm a large, baby. So, hey, if y'all want the love, caps, shirts, let us know. Man, we going to represent your happy. school out there. And more than that, so. Yeah. We will represent. So with that, uh, in all seriousness, just want to say thank you for all those that are following us out there. This show is about the engagement of our people. Um, it's about those HBCU fans that are out there, those HBCU alumni that are out there in regards to doing great things, representing HBCUs to the greatest point, and even more so putting the power 
to the pen in regards to HBCU following their athletic programs and those sports teams. With that, Charles, back to you. What other news do you have for us? Hey, you know, Dr. Bill, before I uh, give you the next piece of news, I want to send a shout out to those in the Texas Medical Center, those on the front lines, especially uh, Wendy oh. Jenkins Bishop and, and Don Walker, uh, who are just doing uh, yeoman's work behind the scenes, especially in the lab during this unprecedented time of, of, of a pandemic. So definitely want to send a shout out in that direction as well. Uh, as I continue with the news, we talk about all things HBCU diaspora. Let's talk about the band, Sonic Boom of the South, <laughs> Jackson State University. Oh, Lord. Oh, uh, yeah. They had I knew it. Unprecedented what? attendance at their what virtual you got? band camp. What? Yes. Over 900 potential members auditioned during their virtual band camp. Uh, shout out uh, to Jackson State for what they were able to do. We talk a little bit, uh, Dr. Bill, in terms of the way uh, we've adjusted during this uh, uh, time period. And this virtual uh, band camp, I thought, was very unique in terms of uh, being able to get to uh, students who are interested in the, in the band. So kudos to Jackson State for putting that on. No doubt about it. How many did you say? Over 900. Over 900. 900. Wow. 900 wow. student participants. No, you needed to shout that out, Charles. That, that, oh, that yeah. is representing. Um, get yeah. it done. And what's nice about that, I've always talked about this on the business side. Mike has chimed in with the data stuff. Charles always brings in different frameworks of how you talk about business. This is one thing we said. Obviously, we are in a pandemic, and the first thing is about being safe. But out of that is the opportunity to be innovative. Yeah. And so the fact that uh, Jackson State found a way to be innovative, look what happened. And now this is something that you can incorporate. You can still do your um, face to face when appropriate time comes back once we get past this COVID-19, right? But now you can integrate this online component. Just think about that. Um, as I tell you about Roy, he is a a great mind in regards to the nexus, thinking about how you move things forward. So I love mixing it up. As we are looking at bringing different things to you in terms of the business framework, you all know that I work with the athletic directors, VPs of athletics, commissioners, in regards to how do we find a way to better what we're doing at the HBC level. And because we are all seriousness about the business and innovative strategies, the tactical analytics associated with the programs. There's no stopping where we can go. So I'm glad that you did share that. Um, before we kind of move on to some more dialogue into the subjects that are uh, particularly that are shining up there, is there any other news that you wanted to come back and shine back in with um, uh, Mike before we get into some of this SIAC cancellation or the Hampton University cancellation, which I think is really intriguing about what took place there, because in some ways they become the first. And I'll get a little more into that. Any news outside of that that you want to jump in before we get into that discussion? Yes, right? of course, of course. Speaking of SIAC, uh, Savannah State has completed it. They're done. They completed the full cycle. Their two-year integration back to Division Two. Two, two oh. years. All right. So in a press release, uh, what was it, this past Friday, the NCAA State Savannah State will become the newest member of Division II beginning September 1. The uh, Division II membership committee made this decision earlier last week. Uh, and as an active member, Savannah State will enjoy uh, eligibility for all Division II benefits, including, but not limited to, the ability to compete in Divi NCAA Division II championship and a vote at the NCAA convention. Savannah State Athletics personnel have worked for two years on, on this. It's been a transition process. So they started it in 2017, late in 2017. And of course, it took a while. Uh, during the two-year transition, Savannah State had to rewrite and update its athletic and compliance manuals and instituted more efficient uh, procedures for monitoring violations, yada 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 dot 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 extra extra <laughs> it has also added uh, the athletic compliance committees and implemented new compliance software all kinds of stuff so the process is complete they are officially in the S siac as a division two member effective september one now prob probably may or may not have a football season but their cycle is complete so that's news of the day 
Yeah, that is big, big time when you talk about that. Um, when you look at what is all into that, people just think, hey, you reclassify, you go from Division One FCS to Division Two, no problem. You yeah. hear a little talk about that, the fact of some things that you have to do in that framework uh, in terms of scholarships, but you see that there is a serious process that uh, needs to get done, which I appreciate you sharing that. On that same vein, in a lot of ways, is the fact that the SIC has Allen University that is transitioning from NAIA to the NCA Division II, and that's a transition point. Mm. Most recently, uh, you've mm. seen those things take place. So I think that's uh, intriguing when you bring that point up to uh, give some clarification on that. Uh, with that, uh, do we want to move into the CIAA SIEC cancellation, or did you want to throw something this back out there, Charles, before we get into that? No, I mean, we can get into it. I mean, we got some, actually, I think it'll go into uh, yeah. more conversation, but uh, just some transfers. Uh, coming from PWI or, or HB uh, uh, Historical White College and Universities to uh, HBCU. So I think that's, you know, some some other news that's out there. But we can get right into CIAA SIAC discussion. Oh, I like it. Great point. CIAA SIAC counsels all fall sports due to COVID-19. So certainly wanted to get you all's thoughts on this. Um, I thought it was intriguing when you jump out of here in a lot of ways um, that this was, to some degree, a joint statement, uh, certainly mm -hmm. in the re releases you saw that. So I thought that was powerful that these two conferences that are made up of HBCU uh, institutions, so in a lot of ways we look at them as HBCU conferences, if you would, was the fact that they decided that to go about this. To add on to that a little bit is, you know, we heard the reports from the SIEC. So we know that the SIEC was moving forward about making this decision. And then you start seeing a partnership with the CIAA. So I thought that was intriguing about what took place there. And, and so before I give some more thoughts, I certainly wanted to hear, Mike, what was your thoughts, one, on the decision, and then in part, about the collaboration in terms of the decision being made between the CIAA and SIAC. Yeah, so I, I guess I thought that, that that actually stood out to me the first, that it was a joint statement. Um, and then the response was the CIAA and the SIAC both appreciate and understand the significant impact that today's announcement with regard dot, dot, dot. So it's almost like a joint response, a joint effort, a joint statement. So I wonder, is there a message within the message? Um, what's the undertone here? I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, you know, you guys have a lot more experience. You know, when you see two conferences make joint statements, joint responses to that. Uh, I know we're in a pandemic, but that just stood out to me as odd. And I wonder if there are other I guess matters where, where there might be a joint SIAC CIAA response coming up, or is there some kind of arrangement? It just it op it opens up Pandora's box to me for more questions than answers. So. I, I got a chance to see the CIAA that did a press conference the day after the announcement, which may give a little more insight to some of the like you said questions that took place. Because somebody actually asked that question, Mike. Um, and from the answer from that, the CIAA uh, commissioner, Jackie Williams, talked about the fact uh, that there was some collaboration in terms of what took place. And she gave the leadership uh, in a lot of ways at the president's council level. The chair exactly. of the presidents um, uh, at Virginia State and at uh, Clark Atlanta University um, a doula at President Abdullah uh, at Virginia State and President French, Dr. French, both of those, let me get that out there, Dr. Abdullah and Dr. Uh, French at Clark Atlanta University were chairs of the respective CIAA and SIEC presidents, and they work together. Uh, what's intriguing to me in a lot of ways that people may not realize, and you know, we find ways to sneak this in there as we do. Both of these are members of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. So the leadership of these schools 
of members of the great fraternity of fire. Uh, what'd you say, leader. Roy? What'd you say, Roy? Did you say something back there, Roy? <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, Roy, in my background. Right. And we can't leave out the commissioner of the uh, SIC that happens to be a great man of Alpha as well. Right? With, uh, yes. <laughs> Moore, getting it done, Commissioner Moore, in a lot of ways, getting it done. As you have some other presidents, uh, Lane College, uh, Central State, Kentucky State, all led by Alpha Men. So I thought it was just interesting that the leadership component as um, Kentucky State President. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Brown is leader of the Division II Council in terms of Central State University, one of the highest councils uh, at the Division II level, getting that out there. Uh, and so I thought that was intrigued about that. And Oh, by the way, uh, even though this is outside of SIC, when you talk about the Gulf Coast out of the conference and the president that happens to be leaving that is a, a Brother Smothers, who happens to be running for national president, general president of Alpha Phi return so it, this leadership just seems to be in our blood just <laughs> put that out there <laughs> but but hey let, let's get back into what to really took place but i talk about that in the sporting hbcu diaspora you know of how in all seriousness that the fraternities and sororities is yeah. is really a part of that hbcu sports culture yeah. in so many different ways we see a lot of members of omega sci-fi mm -hmm that participate in these sports. You see a lot of leadership in the SWAC or members of Kappa Alpha Psi. As mm -hmm. I talked to you about the Phi Beta Sigmas in terms of what they're doing. I, Iota Phi Theta, don't want to leave them out in any disregard. They are a part of the uh, nine. And certainly we see it on the sorority side with a lot of the athletic directors, SWAs that are member of Delta Sigma Theta, uh, Kappa Alpha Psi. Uh, in in those right Zeta Phi President Beta. of Tennessee yeah. State. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah. Yeah. Rose, right? yeah. Yeah. So there's no separation into that. You've seen a lot of these organizations pushing, if you would, um, their national organizations to make sure that they support HBCU. So that's why I wanted to bring that in there in terms of the bigger picture. But along with that, when you look at Commissioner Moore and what he's been able to do, the partnership. Uh, with the uh, National Basketball Association, in terms of uh, in terms of the the the, the association um, and, and what they have done from the players' association side, uh, mixing with the SWAC uh, in regards to the summer programs they do, it's actually given a lot of opportunity for coaches to get their first heard coaching job. So when we take this deeper dive in the CIAA SIAC, it's a chance to actually shine and they were out in the front of a lot of this right in terms of at the division two level and then we seen some of fcs yeah. teams making changes and making statements from the ivy league then the patriot league uh but the first ones to the forefront in a lot of ways were houston tillerson university in the yep. naia yeah. langston yeah. university wiley langston. college university yeah. there's not enough people talking about these at the nia and ncaa division two hbcus leading the pathway and it's yeah. not to say that FCS or FBS programs are not doing that. They have other reasons. But it's time to give credit to these uh, associations, right, conferences mm -hmm. at the Division II level that are happen to be made up of HBCUs and the leadership team in terms of what are they getting done. So I wanted to make sure that we talked about that. With that, my, uh, Charles, what were your thoughts in terms of this SIAC and CIAA? Well, I think, uh, like you mentioned, the, the collaboration uh, kind of struck me as, as a, a, a sort of a novel concept in terms of having all those uh, meetings of the minds, if you will, to come up with this decision. But I think the bigger thing uh, for me is uh, we're July 14th now, and I think the light bulb is really starting to come on for a lot of people in terms of the seriousness of the pandemic and whether we can go forward with sports. It's something that we questioned on this show going all the way back to April, May, uh, as to what's it gonna look like. And now yeah. we're starting to kind of get to those deadlines or, or getting to those, those dates in which we really have to make hard decisions. And we've seen along the way, and like you said, Dr. Bill, in a lot of ways, uh, HBCUs have been at the forefront of saying, you know what, uh, the, the current environment does not afford us to play sports in the fall. So I take my hats off to the leadership 
for, for making hard decisions earlier than late. Yeah, I, 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 think, I totally, I totally agree. Totally agree with that, CB. I'm sorry, uh, Doc. Um, no, I, you're I believe, right. Please jump in there. Yeah, yeah I think the, the leadership and stepping forward. You see, also that line you talk about, Charles Bishop, where some organizations that said no, we're going to play a conference only schedule and do a bubble thing. Other, you know, other universities and conferences said no, we're not doing anything in the fall. This is this is just too much risk. We're seeing the risk tolerance versus potential business revenue loss decisions based on safety safety risk. We're seeing that line of demarcation with different organizations. And you're yeah. seeing true leaders stepping up on a united front saying, uh-uh, this is, this is not worth any risk, any negligible risk. So we're not doing anything in the fall where you have others saying, you know, let's, let's downsize this thing. Let's try to squeeze something out of the tournament. And yeah. We'll see how that works. I'm sorry, Dr. Bill. I mean, but I wanted to chime in. So no, I, I think that's important. When you you, you know that we're co co hosts on this show, so when you need to get things off your chest and get that information out there, get it out there, and it was important. It's it's a framework that people need to hear in regards to it. it goes back again to what we're pushing in regards to the leadership that these two associations and presidents of many of the institutions have shown into making this decision again this is not to downplay anybody else it's an upplay in regards to what we've seen taking place uh from that leadership perspective so um again when you talk about the siac in regards to uh, what commissioner has been able to do down there in regards to the the second uh um, the highest attendance at the division two level uh, the social media activity that he's increased that to the fact that that conference went from no money essentially broke uh, in terms of a program and division two that is leading the way mm -hmm. in regards with the expansion that we see taking place that people are comfortable about making moves into this conference uh ever waters is looking into the move right you just mm -hmm. talked about savannah state coming back allen university with its move uh coming out of there to name some of those programs so a lot of good things are going on at the SIEC and the CIAA with that move. And so while we're talking about in some ways with the MEAC, it's holding up and what it's going to do next uh, in terms of those moves, because I do not think it's dead, if you would. Um, it's going to be interesting because that makes it that much more challenging to put a case for some of these Division II institutions to consider moving up when a lot of things are going well for them where they are. So that's another right. variable that we have to put in there in a lot of ways. Uh, just to put those kind of things on the table. With that, since we're talking about COVID-19 and shutting down fall sports, Hampton University suspended fall sports. In a letter from A.D. Eugene Marshall Jr., there was a chance for the spring sports stating that if conditions permit, we will be anticipating resuming all athletic-related activities during the spring semester 2021. The spring semester will consist of both winter and spring sports end quote uh which gives some questions which kind of came up in that uh or didn't come up with the ciaa and siaa siac excuse me uh in regards to that is what is the demarcation with fall and winter sports right um uh, we right. talked about this you can go and check out block sports i'm a guest on that show um in terms of block sports uh done uh by Jefferson, the show host there, Jackson State University uh, alum uh, that co-hosts that show. Just make sure Charles know that I do give love <laughs> to Jackson State. I've guessed on this show. Um, so so those Jackson State Tiger fans can stop pushing on me. Yes, I am coming on the 14th, 1400 Club. I will be coming up. It's not personal. Uh, Charles just has to his schedule. To. There's a lot of things that go on that he gets into first. I, I Gotta wait my turn. Do, right. <laughs> you know, in regards to that, they act like, why, why Dr. Cavill not showing us love? No, it's not like that. I like your athletic director, VP <laughs> of athletics. You know, I like Jackson State. Very proud program. Let me get that on the record. Man, you're doing a wow. lot of smooth. You're doing a lot of smooth. Exactly. I, mean, <laughs> I want to make sure what? I get... Get, I need my what barbecue plate full. When we get the tailgate, I just need really? to make sure, you know, you got your tailgate secret. Don't look like we're going to be able to do a lot of that in real life. We're going to have to social distance 
our tailgates with you in your backyard making a sick that you know we do every couple of Fridays. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You know, y'all see how this cold in Jackson State history, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is it that bad in the 1400 club charles I'm like, you, you, mike see mike you taking advantage of the fact that I, I i have taken the controls out of production out of my hand i still have the ability to send a text message and say mute the mic mute mike. yeah i'm not even gonna call you professor anymore mr mike washington professor washington i'm gonna mute your mic but you know, oh, man. Doc, I, 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 and I'm real curious about this part, especially with the potential of moving um, football season into the spring <laughs> in terms of, of, of what could happen, uh, what, I mean, especially basketball season, something like the CIAA basketball tournament. I mean, where like where's the line of demarcation in terms of once you start kind of pushing these seasons together, assuming that we have some sort yeah. of uh, vaccine moving forward so. Yeah, I think a lot of that is interesting because the real winter sport that you really are talking about for the most part is basketball, men's and basketball. Yeah. And so yeah. let's get this on the table fully. Um, and that did not come up for the CIAA and SIEC when they said fall sports. People may or may not realize that the fall sports actually include the winter sports in terms of non-conference play. Mm. In Division Two, that starts a little earlier. Their conference games oftentimes starts in late November, early December, which usually is not the case at the Division One level. You've seen some of the Power Fives as they stretched out to 20 games, 22 games, that you start in seeing them playing some games in early December. But usually that's all non-conference games. So most, most mid-major Division One programs actually do not see start conference play until January, which we get back which would mean that you could certainly play basketball conference, which you start hearing a little bit in football with the, you know, Big Ten, Pac-12, right, talking about only playing conference games in football. So what does that mean for basketball? What does that mean for the non-conference schedule that starts in November, December? Are those games going to be played? We haven't heard any real indication other than what you just see here from Hampton, which to me is one of the intriguing thoughts about that move was the fact that they basically said that we're not doing any basketball men's and women's until January, which means pretty much full conference. Yeah. yeah. Now what's also intriguing about this, I want your thoughts on that. But as you talk about that, I also want your thoughts in regards to essentially, this is the first program. It happens to be an HBCU at the FCS level that took this move outside of the conference. We've talked about the FCS level with the Ivy League. We yep. talked about that with the Patriot League. And what's unique about the Ivy League, um, everybody knows about the academic pro programs in that conference and how that goes first. But they're a different model, uh, not only not playing in the postseason, which you see from the SWAC, but they don't even play in a bowl game, right? They actually shut off the season, and they even played a basketball just on the weekends, essentially uh, Friday-Saturday type matchups outside of the school um, to make sure that the conference plays two days and things of that nature. So even for basketball, it's a different model that Harvard does. But their conference office, is my understanding, is on the campus of Harvard University. So once Harvard has talked about shutting down fall, that meant unlike what you could do in the SWAC with it being in the Birmingham what you could do with the MEAC being in Norfolk, right? That that you can't have a conference if the conference office is shut down. Right. Right. So it makes a little more sense when you hear that. And Patriot League is one of those academic leagues in a lot of ways people may not realize that um, sees themselves in the same framework a lot of ways with the uh, Ivy League. Um, yeah. Some people tease them that they're the little brother that I believe they will never get there, but that's a whole different discussion for us outside <laughs> of that HWCU conference world that may not understand it. But I did want to share that a little bit uh, with those out there that were looking for a different perspective. So again, getting back to Hampton University, they went outside of the Big South. We have not yeah. seen that at the FCS or FBS level, institutions making their own decisions. So what are your thoughts on those two things, Charles? Start with you and then go to Mike. What are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I think within the statement, and, and that was what jumped out with me, this was done in the best interest of Hampton University students, student athletes, faculty, staff, administration, alumni, and fans. So that, to me, is a, an administration that is uh, recognizing uh, their stakeholders. Uh, regardless of the conference, uh, this is uh, something that is affecting people that look like us. And I think they were uh, very much out, out front saying, you know, we're, we're, we're handling it uh, beyond what our conference is gonna do. Uh, we're taking uh, a proactive step in terms of what we're gonna do here at Hampton University. So I take my hat off to Hampton in terms of being uh, one of those out there on the limb saying, you know, whatever you guys do, you do, but this is gonna be done in the best interest of Hampton University. Uh, Mike, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, you remember the movie, Think Like a Man, Act Like a Lady, or something like that? Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a, a, a kind of a reverse example. They're saying, think like Big South, but act like Hampton. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we, we're, we're, here with, we're here with the Big South. We know what they like. We, we think what they like. We, I mean, you know, we're in attune to them mentally, but we're, we are Hampton University still. And we're going to take the leadership regardless, regardless of what the Big South does and do what's in our nature, what's innate in our nature, what's best for our students. We still know who our stakeholders are. We still know what's important for our true customers, our students, our teachers, our faculty. And kudos to them, their leadership for stepping out, regardless yeah. of what the Big South is doing and saying, we're going to continue to think like Big we're going we're gonna to continue to act like Hampton. We may think like Big South, but we're going to act like Hampton. So that's my I thought. think that's, that's an thought. interesting perspective, but I would love to hear what the uh, Big South Commission and presidents are thinking about. They might be a little upset with that. I'm uh, sure they are. Point. I'm sure they are, <laughs> without <laughs> question. <laughs> so, but it's just going to be interesting talking about that. You know, does that open the door back to the MEAC in regards to that? Because um, if you're the MEAC, um, obviously, three teams are talking about leaving, but you still are doing stuff and you have one season left. If there is football, what would be your thoughts if the, the MEAC just got radical, for lack of better words, and said, hey, we're going to split up into divisions this semester, reduce the travel because of COVID-19 if we're going to do this, play a championship game, uh, play it on the highest division, I mean, highest side with the highest percentage, and in a lot of ways follow the model uh, what you have with the SWAT. What would your thoughts if the MEAC just radically threw everything in there and said, hey, this is what we're going to do with the schedule this year? What would if, I'm thoughts MEAC thoughts? Fan, if I'm a MEAC fan, I'm like, what took you so long? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I I'm kind of, you know that emoji? You, where that's been at? <laughs> <laughs> you know that emoji? So, where's all this been? <laughs> <laughs> so is it too little, too late, or do you just be like, this is a great idea, let's go with it, make it work? I think they, oh, have, definitely no, they, they have no choice at this standpoint. Why not? <laughs> Charles? Yeah, I mean, I, I, radical ideas, I, I love them, but outside the box thinking, uh, yeah. I, I guess I just hate that it, uh, it kind of took for this environment to happen to, to kind of have some, some radical thinking in that regard. So. Yeah, that would be fascinating to me if they just was like, hey, let's do what we're going to do. This is last year. And it'd be a great way to say this is the 50th anniversary. Uh, let's throw all caution to the wind. We're finna remake ourselves. We still have great institutions here, but we're going to send everybody out with a bang, and we're going to do it like this. This is um, redefining it. And it also is a way to show those members of the state that we are about being innovative, and we're yeah. not going to allow folks um, to stop us from – doing those things now or whenever. So what about right not doing it now? So I just thought I'd put it out there for kick. So if, if that happens, um, who knows uh, in regards to what the MEAC doing? I, I know they're looking at it, but I thought I'd put it out there. With that, as we kind of come up to the, to, to the close of this uh, hour, as we look to, to give some listeners in that, before I go on here and kind of uh, look what is out there from many of our posters. They're really going in on COVID-19. They say, look, man, shut it down. <laughs> they say the writing's mm -hmm. on the wall. Uh, it's over. Don't worry about it. Let's kick it back off. Spring 2021. Uh, somebody put it out there. Fall 2021. 
uh, let's go with it. No vaccine to Jan 2021. Um, so, you know, look for the vaccine. I, um, I think it's open. Uh, people are, are talking about what's going on out there. So I can understand. I think um, our followers have big time. Willie Alex Hine, top doc, is doing a lot of uh, uh, kissing up today. So I can <laughs> follow yeah. what you're talking about, Mike. Not really. Not really. Shout out to uh, Isaiah Thornton, uh, one of the students there at Texas Southern University, an intern with us. Uh, I know he's itching to get back, so hang in there, Isaiah. We miss you. We still gonna look at doing that show, so um, with the professor and the student. So look for me to give you an update about what's going on there. Uh, Belinda Johnson is talking about what happened to Hampton. Um, we were just revisiting the fact that they shut down their fall sports and winter sports, for that matter, and say yep. they are open back up in spring. So that's what that discussion has came about. Obviously, if you uh, we're talking about how that affects their move to the Big South because we've seen everybody else pretty much make this as a conference decision outside of what we've seen some NAIA programs do uh, out of the Red River Athletic Conference and out of the Sooner Athletic Conference get ahead of this. And so we were just opining that and see what that looked like in regards to what that looks like. Dr. Roderick Holmes, uh, the sports analytics guy that is working with me uh, uh, in the mathematics department here, getting it done in a lot of ways, big time sports fan over there, especially track yeah. and field. Uh, getting that. With that, what about these athletes? We've talked about this, obviously, in football. Mm. It became a big deal in terms of basketball. Now a little bit of baseball has jumped in here. University Absolutely. of Texas pitcher. Yes. Cameron Fields transfers to Texas Southern University play to play baseball. Fields made the announcement via Twitter. He's a grad transfer, so he's getting his uh, year of eligibility in terms of finish up. He's coming over to uh, Texas Southern University, and this may not be the end, uh, not just for the other sports, for baseball, but wanted to get your thoughts on that. And then we can get into some of this that's out there about the basketball news in regards to what we're hearing on HBCU game day, uh, what they put out there about DeMarcus Cousin and his statement. So, mm. but first, in regards to baseball, I want to see what your thoughts on that. Charles is laughing, man. He got some he got some thoughts on what's going on. You got something to share? I'm going to make you wait a little bit over there, Mike. I'm going to you first this time, Mike. What no, are don't do CB the- like. Go ahead, CB. Go ahead. You got it. Go ahead, man. You know, I, I understand DeMarcus Cousins' sentiment. Uh, I guess I just question, like, what what, what were you thinking? I mean, uh, in terms of uh, it, it seems as though, I, and I understand there being uh, quote unquote, a big brother to these uh, younger guys coming up uh, through now and saying more or less take a look at HBCUs. But my gosh, man, did, I mean, the opportunity was there for you as well. The opportunity is, was there for a lot of these uh, NBA players. And, you know, honestly, you look down your nose at HBCUs and now, all right, well, okay. I saw, I, forgive me for not, you know, doing a somersault now that the light bulb is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I, that is I, certainly I, one I, opinion. I, 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 uh, before I get to you, Mike, let me say that a little bit since you want to uh, pass the mic. I'm going to make you hold now. Trudy Jackson I'll, is counting all four. Know. She's jumping on there. Jake Mack is in the building, a uh, big time photographer that's shot literally all around the country, all over the, around the world for that matter. Sports um, in regards to that. Check out some of his photography on HBCU classes. You can go to his site, check him out, go to his Instagram, Jake Mack. And you can, uh, that's J Mac, literally J M A C. And you can get information in regards to how you can get his, um, his uh, books that have pictures of HBCU classics and the bands. Great information. Great work. We're going to bring him on the show, give him some love. Dwight Moore is out here uh, checking us out. So George Ad- Atterbury uh, showing us some love. So just wanted to make sure that we did that. As, as I said, Trudy Jackson, Belinda Johnson. The ladies are out here showing up, showing out. That's what I like. Come on. That's right. Come we, on, Ian. For all the people. All the mm-hmm. people. With that, Mike, go ahead. Thank you, Doc. Well, with you regard know. to the, <laughs> 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 with regard to uh, Mr. Cousins, I guess, I mean, we've been going back and forth on a couple of chat lines that I'm on. And and I'm 50-50 on it because on the one hand, I, I do agree with you, uh, CB, where, you know, he says, I didn't have a chance. I think today's youth may be, today's players today's may not understand how to con- convey themselves and i think mm-hmm. he was really saying is maybe that option wasn't a popular i think that's 
English for maybe this option wasn't as popular to me as in, and maybe I didn't have those folks opening up. And I feel that he's trying to encourage and support the young man and his efforts. Maybe he's doing a bad job of expressing it, but that's my takeaway from it. And I, I kind of, I'm 50, 50. I don't, I, I don't walk away from it feeling like, Oh, come on now. Don't go spread the hate. Come on. You had a chance. You took the money. You did you look down on HBCs. I just think, <laughs> I just Mike got Mike threw that in the time when he took the money. <laughs> so, oh. oh, y'all tough, man. That was that was a little jab. Sorry. Oh, no. oh, so he's God. like, yeah, I'm with you, but take this little jab with you. Uh, I, I'm feeling Charles. I'm feeling Professor Bishop a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, Professor yeah. Washington talking about. I want to read this quote. Let's dissect yeah. this a little bit. Quote: I sent him a message saying, "You have a chance to change sports as a whole." Looking back on it now, I wish that I had the opportunity to do it the right way. In my opinion, the attention, the energy that a kid like Mikey could take to an, any HBCU would change the face of college sports. The Marcus Cousin on Mikey Williams and HBCU via uh, take it to there with Taylor Roots. Uh, a little more conversation. And you're right. We have taken this back. And this is to a couple of chats. The chat that we're talking about happens via chat of alpha members that we bring all of them are hbcu graduates from alabama a m houston tillerson jackson state um prairie View a m university texas southern to name a few of them uh in regards to the in this group shit think tank that we have um that goes back and forth on these different issues that we opine all the time and i saw it a little differently so i just want to get our uh, hands on facebook to talk about this and germinate and kind of see what perspective they had i was a little more on mike's of framing i did not see it as pressure because he came out with it up front and when i say he i'm talking michael Williams, michael williams so let's not forget that component of it that mike had put this out there so it's not like he's putting pressure on somebody that hasn't talked about hbc this is a guy that went on social media and has pushed the narrative ultimately what you've seen with the signing of uh make a market talking about it in a lot of ways i thought it was brilliant when you talk about that so up front he made that statement it seen i see them as showing support for his decision, as if Big Brother saying that, hey, we support you in this endeavor. We're on the highest level, and we're saying that you can make it work. You have that talent. We understand that we took a different path, but because of all the social media out there, the fact that you jumped out there, we want to make sure that you are supported because we know there's a lot of people that are going to put negative frameworks on it, and we want to say, don't worry about that negative. We got your back on this one, uh, yeah. little brother, that you can do this, and you can make it right. There are social media platforms out there, and they're saying, hey, let you double down and saying, hey, in fact, they're saying, I did it wrong. I didn't understand that I had this type of power uh, associated with it. And I wish I was intellectually as enough and astute enough as you were at the time to understand that I did have that option uh, to do it then. <coughs> so I just think it's a, a different way that they are actually reinforcing his message and not pressuring, which is my point when you talk about that, that He's saying, I didn't believe I had the professional support. And so he wants to make sure that he has that support. And so I know, Charles, you might have a pushback on that. So I want to get you in there. Then we're going to go to Rob Calloway as he comes in there and get his opinion on that. And then we can go back to Mike as we dialogue of that. Um, before we do that, I did want to play a little bit of the music as we're going to tune off uh, and start to be prepared to tune off on the KCH uh, 1230 AM station as we downplay this but for those that want to continue this conversation a little bit off mic go to facebook and you can catch us uh next 15 20 minutes or so as we kind of uh, exercise the framework bringing rob calloway talking about the H, H hbcu report uh as he has some news that there will not be a show today so we may be able to extend this a little bit longer we'll talk to our production to see if that works in regards to maybe going an uh, hour and a half so as we do that, play the music, uh, and you all stay focused, stay tuned, and we'll bring you back in to get Charles' a rebuttal on that, then Mike and bring in Rob Calloway uh, in regards to how we do it. So thank you for the listeners that are listening to us live on KCH 1230 uh, with the Hall of Famer, Radio Hall of Famer, Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Rob Cooper. So thank you. What up, world? It's your
week, the HBCU way. Get the latest updates from your HBCU Sports News of the Week with your host, Dr. Kabil, Mike, and Charles. On Dr. Kabil's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab radio show with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Central on KCOH 1230 AM, Facebook Live, and as a podcast on streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Podcast App. Hey, Charles, come back in and give me your thoughts in regards to um, your rebuttal to what we just said. Sure, I, I was saying basically that uh, athletes would feel as though they did not have the, the information or the power to sort of uh, make that decision back then <laughs> to look towards the HBCU. I, I, I get real frustrated with hearing that narrative because uh, throughout the years, people have consistently said that, no, you do have the power. Uh, whether you believe you have the power, that, that's on you. But, yes, you do have the power to make that change. <laughs> Fab Five, you know, afterwards, you know, they talk about, wow, what if we <laughs> did X, X, Y, and Z. But, and that's the part that really frustrates me. It's like, well, <laughs> the light bulb could have gone off back here. But, okay, whatever, you let it go off here. So, you know, push, push your narrative. So. Yeah, yeah. Charles been reading a little bit too much of my, uh, of my, the sporting, Ah, ah, I'm a student of. He power to the people. Go ahead, Rob. What's your <laughs> but you, I mean, you know, I I kind of got to agree with Charles. Like they've always had the power. You know, the power's always been there. But I get it. You know, it's the glitz and glam that they've been going after. I mean, yeah. And, and you know, it's those seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar deals, like what Zion got. You know, that they going after, and you might not necessarily get that. At HBCU, but you will get seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of love, what worth the rearing, you know. Like your folks don't have to worry about you. If you're a good kid, your folks don't have to worry about you when you go to an HBCU. But um, you know, the, the thing about it is, is that you know, I'm glad to start hearing hearing these athletes, you know, and we need to hear more. You know, like I love to hear LeBron say, you know what, I wish I had a went to an HBCU. Well, we know he wish he had went to do, but you know if he said it, it was still, yeah. <laughs> it would still be cool, you know. Um, yeah. But but I do think uh, the fact that we're starting to see a lot of these. I mean, like, my, and, and no, I'm not trying to brag, you know. But shouts out to Bama State and Mo Williams, but Mo Williams is working that thing down to Bama State. Like, man, <laughs> we we got some top notch recruits that have signed on to play at Bama State, and so the thing about it is, is that. Um, it could happen, you know, and, and I was telling Doc the other day um, that, and, and I told y'all the other day too, that I'm not sure if we'll ever see Mercury Maker, we'll, if we'll actually see him in a Howard uniform just yeah. because just because of the way that this whole COVID is playing out yeah. uh, these days. But the fact of the matter that he made the commitment and, and, you know, he's challenging other kids to make that commitment. So at some point, we're going to get to see him play. Maybe not him. But other players, you know, I'm not sure, you know, I've been seeing pictures of Brandon James in a fam uniform and a Winston-Salem uniform, all kind of stuff. Not sure if that's going to happen. But um, I, I do think that it's changing the narrative a, a whole lot. And with Boogie Cousins coming out, Boogie could have went to fam. Boogie, Boogie was right there in Mobile at John mm -hmm. before high school. He could have went to any – he could have went to AM. He could have <laughs> went to Bama State. He could have went to any – Southern – he was right there, Jackson State. He in the Gulf. He could have went any to any swag school that he wanted to, but he went to Kentucky. 
the glitz and glam. Look, if John, if John Calipari come to your house, right? John Calipari versus Rob Calloway, you like, come on, man. It's a no brainer. <laughs> it's a no brainer. You know, because you come yeah. and you, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. So I, I definitely think that the uh, commitment is changing the narrative. And now that we're starting to, you know, hear the likes of Boogie Cousins and uh, we're starting to see a lot of these high school recruits uh, start speaking up more about it. And we're starting to see players actually transfer the HBCUs, not just basketball, but football, baseball, volleyball, you know, everything. So, uh, right. you know, I think it's a good deal. I, I so, always what, wonder if, I, no, I always wonder if HBCU co- coaches had the stature of coaches of yesteryear. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like, you, like you mentioned, Rob, in terms of John Calipari sits in your, in your living room was John Calipari. But, I mean, I've always wondered, well, what, what if it was Bob Morton? What if it was Dave Whitney? What if it was – uh, you know, whomever that, that had that sort of stature, would would, would things have changed? What if, or was, if, what if it was Pete Richardson or somebody like that? Right. Now, see, that yeah. level, yeah, that yeah. level right there, Eddie Robinson, Pete, any, any of those guys, even Stump could have walked in the house and somebody would be like, oh, yeah, I was sending my kid to play for Stump. Like, I mean, it's, yeah. it's one of those things. But when you talk about basketball, I think that um, that guy will probably be Lavelle Moten. Lavelle Moe yeah. walking your house, yeah. he's going to make you think about Ooh, it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 He's going to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great yeah. point, right? Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. 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 you got to realize, true. man, Cut Cousins is, what, 29 years old, 30 years old? He had this decision to make 10 years, a whole decade ago. <laughs> different narrative then. He's, yeah. a, thing. Uh, he's, yeah. a, yeah. he's a different yeah. human being at that point. He, 10 yeah. years later, fast forward, yeah. press, you know, press pause. Now he's had a chance to reflect on it. Yes, he took a different path. When he says, I didn't have the power, maybe he meant it, maybe he didn't. He, he did take the money one year at Kentucky, and he's a fifth-round draft pick. <laughs> but now, guess what? In today's age, look at where we are with HBCUs now. It's come full circle. HBCUs have gone, gotten a little bit more prominence, a little bit more power. And now it's raised the consciousness. Throw in the George, you know, Floyd's. Throw in all of that's happening is one big gumbo that's kind of fueling this thing, and it's it's raising the conscious level of our athletes. Mm-hmm. He, that didn't happen ten years ago. Yeah. So he, yeah. So he's yeah. got the benefit of ten years of experience, wisdom matched in with what's happening today, and it's made it's made for one weird gumbo. And now he's going back and saying, "Hey, brother, I support you, whatever." So. You take it for what it is. I think that's great points when you start to really looking at it that you got to look at the moment. And that's why we're saying, you know, you know, is it a movement or is it a moment? And so I think you have to really look at those things and we'll find out how much of a movement this is versus the moment versus the moment he was in. It was a whole different picture. I mean, the Twitter world and social media platforms, we must admit mm-hmm. while they were here, it was different in regards mm-hmm. to the power of branding. The ability of what we've seen LeBron James do, as you talked about his son putting on uh, different HBC uniforms out with, with, with those framings out there, I think is really intriguing when you think about it. But even the decision that we're seeing with LeBron made, while there was a lot of cast, castation in regards to what he did at that time, we started to understand that the bigger picture in terms of him and what he did for players, understanding the value of their brand and that narrative has yeah. changed and empowered people. So we can't forget those little things that change the framework of what's going on. And with that, Rob, as I come back to you, uh, reading some of the comments, Dr. From Cavill, them, giving them a shout out. Yes. Dr. Cavill, I'm sorry. Is it possible that, that the off-camera student can ask a question, the, le- the social distancing student? Uh, can, can I make a comment on that before y'all move forward? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> jump in here. Let me, let me get this for okay. Rob in regards to that, that thought in, in terms of this. Rob, as you said, you don't have to apologize. But I'm the only one that got to apologize, according to Mike, on here for institution. <laughs> but, you know, we show love to our institution. So you ain't got to apologize about Alabama State as you talk about that. You shout that out anytime your chest feels like you need to put that on the table. We're going to talk about Mo and what, what Mo Williams is doing at Alabama State. We recognize that you're proud and excited. You can do that. Uh, before we let you jump back in here, like I said, we're going to extend this a little bit. So we're going to get a chance to get everybody in there. So no rush. So with that, uh, Roy, let let the student jump in here. In turn, he has some thoughts. Uh, proud Morehouse in regards to that. What what comments you have in terms of our production person coming in? But what oh. students do you have on to make a thought? Well, actually, no. This is the the fam you the, the fam you student. I'm, 
I, 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 you know, I can't okay. be professor or doctor yet. You know, you, Charles, and Mike have been at this for a minute. Rob is the grad assistant, so he done been through some of the classes. I'm still just coming in. You know, I may be a second, second, third semester sophomore with the crew, but we getting there. <laughs> so, but, but, but here's the thing. I, I, I had to jump in on that conversation, though, because I think the piece to this that everybody is missing, and it's funny because I think the athletes, the pro athletes have been very careful in not mentioning it so that they don't get any type of tampering um, loss, you know, cross any tampering lines or anything. The NCAA, the, these students can now make money off of their likeness. Yeah. So now no this, this is why they have the power. Money. What he's telling them now is that, listen, 10 years ago, I had to take the money. Look, I ain't talking for Boogie. I don't know Boogie. Yeah. I ain't never met Boogie. <laughs> I'm just using Boogie as an example because he's the, the – uh, well, I'm going to say Rob Calloway, the NBA player. 10 years huh. ago, Rob Calloway, the NBA player, had to take money from the, hot, from the booster hiding off in the corner. Yeah, McCourt, hundred dollar handshake. Exactly. <laughs> the, the the student now can go to Nike and be like, guess what, man? Me and three of my boys is gonna go down there to FAMU to that Alfred Lawson Center, which is one of the best facilities in in FC in Division One basketball for 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 mid major schools. And just imagine when y'all bring y'all cameras and stuff set up in there, and we pack them twenty thousand, fifteen thousand seats out every night for a basketball game. Mm. How much is our endorsement check gonna be? Is this a plug mm. for the player or for the Alfred Lawson Center? Player? Absolutely both of them. <laughs> Brody James, go down to have you to Tallahassee, boy. I'm just trying to ask. I'm Look, just, hey, we come, hey, but, hey, but, 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 Mike, Mike, we coming to the swag, baby. We coming to the swag. <laughs> I'm just, listen, you trying to, you throwing some shots in there. But know? no. I love the fam you person. I, I Alfred get, Lawson. But, but think about, but think about that. I want to get everybody started on that. But think about it, yeah, because. you bringing up. With NLI, is you right? That That's the, the difference. Name, likeness and image, it does change all those, and that was part of what I get wanted to get to. But yeah. the fact that you put it squarely on the table, I appreciate that. What is point? Let me give some shout out to a couple of people because they're getting into this. We got Mo Carter on here giving us some love up there in Huntsville, uh, Southern uh, alumni doing doing great things with the uh, broadcast network team up there in Huntsville, Alabama, covering. Alabama A and M and the Swag giving him some love. Jimmy is jumping back out here in terms of no, not not until Howard wins the championship. Jay Max says, "Hey man, it is what it is. Their comments are helping kids make that difficult decision." Anthony Weston, Howard needs to make the tournament first. These folks go back and forth. It, it never cuts out. Um, but people are getting in. It's Joe Clay, our HBCU coaching staff meeting the meeting to discuss being ready for the top prospect overflow. Uh, Anthony Arrington. And so you got people that are really passionate about what's going on here. But let's bring it back to the center about the name, image, and likeness in terms of what they could really do in changing the platform of having the ability to self-brand yourself, setting yourself up early. And these, te these young men and women, for that matter, are learning extremely early at the AAU levels and within their house and with many professional athletes taking these AAU teams talking about the ability and when to start your brand that you can navigate this space and earn that revenue differently than you can 10 years ago. So when you put that in here, what are your thoughts about that now, Rob? Oh man, you know, let me, let me just say this as, as somebody that is a, you know, I love HBCU, but every Saturday my TV is turned to university of Georgia. The, the dogs that you know that's my <laughs> squad right and, and here's the thing you know at the university of georgia we we faced something a, a few years ago uh we were we were posed to win the national championship with aj green and um aj got into a little trouble right because he sold the jersey <laughs> and and he sold some autographs right and and the thing about it was was that everybody was like well damn it's his jersey why can't he sell it it's his right. autograph. Why can't he sell it? Right. So now that, you know, fast forward to 2021, um, I think this, this would be a great move. And, and, you know, the, the, the go with Roy. Now this does give those, those students because they don't necessarily have to go to Duke to get a big check or to go to Carolina or any of those schools in the ACC or anything like that, because yeah, you can take your talents to, 
Lord forbid, Jackson State. You can take your time <laughs> down here. <laughs> oh, I do. Look. Or, I guess CD's or, going next. <laughs> wait, no. <laughs> or you can always bring your talents to the Academy at Alabama State University. It don't matter. But the thing about it is, <laughs> is that is that now that, that you have that ability to capitalize on your likeness, then that kind of levels the playing field because a lot of times that's what that's what the kids want. They want to they want that notoriety. And so, you know, if, if you tell somebody, yeah, you can get money now and go to a HBCU like why wouldn't you I mean and you might actually get more and when you start thinking about the local like the 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 the, the local businesses or whatnot like if you a standout player now I don't know if they're gonna put a cap on how much money or who can make the most because you know the punter ain't gonna make no money let's just go ahead and be honest punter ain't making no money <laughs> but 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 that's the quarterback go make some money you know so you know I mean that's the way life is anyway so I think that uh that's I think great. that the actual would level the playing field. And so if you got a Shaquille O'Neal or the Nick Shaq, if there is one, yeah, it's not a it's not a big deal to go to Texas Southern or Prairie View or all corner any of those schools or even Fam U for that matter. Um, because you can get the money. Exactly. Yeah. And Jim Jimmy was waiting on somebody to say Prairie View with the two yeah. back championship. <laughs> Jimmy went on the line. I know. <laughs> I knew Mike was going to find a way to get it in there, so I yes, appreciate sir. you doing that love for us, Rob. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm safe, just safe. saying to have an opportunity to play in front of the one of the most engaged fan bases in all HBCU <laughs> athletics, uh, I think that goes a long way. So, <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Now everybody, so everybody the doing the most. <laughs> Everybody get their re- re- recruiting pitch on. I like. That. I mean, look, this is this is total Mississippi spelling V with two E's. This is so Mississippi. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, this, this, this is good, Mike. Let me jump to you. What are your thoughts, really, breaking down the uh, LLI, the names, image, and likeness, right? In regard, no. what is that? How does that change the narrative with the brand? In the association, plus let's add this part that the Nike, Adidas, Comp, and uh, for that matter, Under Armour are going to have to change the way they practice based on what the NCAA did with those assistant coaches that took place. Is another component of that that they are going to have to reframe how they used to pass that money because now they can't pass it through the coaches because of what took place. So they're going to have to go straight to these players in terms of that name image and likeness right um so that's an additional component to really break down how this moves what are your thoughts on that mike yeah I, I, and i think roy i joke with roy that that's a very that that's a very point that's a very key point that i, I think we're missing in this discussion first yes when it comes to power that does change the game it brings a totally different narrative we have to understand however that when we say name and likeness there are some restrictions on that as well there are certain things that can't be done. And if I read through the rules, I think that the person's explicit name can't be used. Their likeness, which is an image, a legal term, which is intellectual property can be used, which is an implied image that grants an institution or an object or a business some kind of funding, but they've taken it and put a twist on it. So I, I think we need to be careful about giving that name likeness uh, bill that is on the table that we're discussing all the power that we think it's going to garner. I think it does change the narrative, but I think and I think it does change the framework by which some of our athletes now have the choice to either go to a D1 or go to a go to I'm not even going to say fam. I can't get my lips to say fam. fam. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you want to go to a multi-million dollar complex like Prairie View A&M University which has built a new 20 to $30 million complex on the hill, which is the highest point between the Gulf Coast and the uh, Prairie View a and Texas uh, City. Uh, and you want to be seen in a multi-million dollar sports complex with your image in that background. Now you have the ability 
to make some kind of capital gains off of that. So to your point, yes, I think that has changed the narrative in that point. I don't know about that that little bitty hallway y'all talk about at Fan U. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 this is good. We got about we got about nine, eight eight minutes here, nine minutes here. So I do want us to get some kind of closing thoughts in terms of how we frame this. Uh, uh, with that going on, but but I think it's very important when you look at it. But to your point, Mike, the fact that there's likely going to be a cap on this, I think may be more beneficial to HBCUs than without. Yeah, cap. yeah, right. And the likelihood for the NCAA Division One is they're probably going to put a cap. And let's not forget that the states are already opening this up. California, yeah, uh, you know, Florida has just talked Florida. about next year, 2021. <laughs> Uh, that it starts. So that's why one reason the NCAA is going to the uh, federal government in regards to try to put caps on this, which may happen. Then you're probably going to see some more court cases. But in some capacities, I think the cap actually levels the playing field. It's kind of what we hear about baseball and why we say baseball is a chance that you can win more championships because it has a cap artificially set on scholarships, 117 so you can't be a bigger school and have nicer facilities mm-hmm. and just scholarship everybody out like you can in football with 83 versus only 63 in at the FCS level. So the cap may not be a bad thing. So what are your thoughts in regards to that, Charles, in regards to understand the NLI and the cap component that is likely going to come? I mean, you hit it, Dr. DeVille. I, I think the, 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 the cap could, could, could be beneficial uh, to HBCUs. And one thing that you – taught us in class uh, and that that stuck out in me is the way the NCAA uh, uh, readjusts. Every time it looks as though HBCUs are kind of uh, making headway or or, or getting ahead, uh, there is always some sort of readjustment. So that's something that always kind of rolls in my mind in terms of uh, when you see a pathway towards uh, equitability uh, 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 that something, you know, go to the the state, they go to the federal, what something happens in some type of way, they, they, they you know, they kind of put us right back, kind of where we started, that kind of thing. Right. Certainly want to give a shout out to Dwayne Lewis over there at University of Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. We got to make sure we give them some love as we're doing that. I want to go back to Rob, but I'm going to change it just a little bit uh, in that dy- dynamic as people continue to put your thoughts out there on Facebook and, and we'll, we'll make sure that we get some responses to that. We talked a little bit earlier about Hampton, and I know today you're not doing the show, and that's why we've extended it and brought you on this platform to do that. But I'm sure if you were going to do the show, you you were going to get in some talk about the SIAC, CIAA, in terms of them counseling the season, and tease a little bit out of it, because I'm sure you'll go into more dialogue on your show on Thursday uh, and Saturday coming up, as well as Hampton um, really getting out there and being at the FCS level and how they became the only individual institution that took it out of the conference hands and made a decision. And we were kind of opining that, but we didn't get a chance to get the Rob Calloway thought about the HBC report on how you take those two things. Well, first of all, you started talking about the SIAC, CIAA. First of all, Dr. Kavir, I, I always wonder who, who, what sources say look like. Now I know what sources say look like. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> you are, I always thought it was some little Asian dude. It's you, sources say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, man, you supposed, supposed to keep that quiet, man. Don't let everybody look, know the business. But look, so. <laughs> so Thanks look. for that look. When they come to the SIAC, CIAA, um, you know, from everything I understand, it was a coordinated effort, you know. And, um, what, you know, look, Grady Brewer told me, the, the basketball coach at Morehouse, he told me weeks ago, like when the news came out about Morehouse, he was like, look, man, and I think I told you all this a couple weeks ago, he said, look, man, we the, we the school with all the money. Like, so if we not playing, trust me, no other school in the SIAC is going to play. <laughs> they just don't want to say it right now. And so, lo and behold, we got we got the memo Thursday that not only was the SIAC but the CIAA, uh, they were both canceling uh, fall sports, and I'm cool with it. You know, when I talked to um, Jackie McWilliams uh, um, a, a few months ago on the show, we we talked about all kind of different scenarios for bringing sports back, sports with no fans, 
sports with limited fans, no sports. And, you know, it's just one of those things where, I mean, she said it then and she said it last week. You know, you got to uh, stay in the best interest of the students, student athletes, uh, the faculty, everybody that that's their own campus. You know, you got to put them first. And think about it uh, because, you know, the lives and safety come way before playing a football game on Saturday or, or playing a, 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 a basketball game a couple nights a week. So so I, I'm definitely cool with that. Now, when you start talking about Hampton, look, man, what, what, what Bernie Mac say? When we break, we break, you know, like, <laughs> like that, look, look, this ain't, this, look, they just doing the HBCU thing. They just ain't in the HBCU conference. They just doing, no. they, they follow the suit <laughs> because see, here's the deal. Look, man, look, the uh, shouts out to the, uh, the Patriot league and, you know, the folks that got good sense that's, that's starting to shut things down because see what everybody else is doing at this point is selling us hope. They ain't selling me hope, you know, they ain't selling everybody hope that it's going to be some football. So that's why when the Big Ten start talking about, we just going to play conference games. No, you're not. You're not. No, you're not. You're just trying to sell somebody some hope. Hey, look, we don't even have we don't even have a way. I just saw the helmet uh, uh, this morning, the prototype helmet with the with the whole mask thing built in. We don't even have a mask yet for, for the helmet. So there's no freaking way that you can tell me that we're about to play some football in the fall. There's just no way. Like, there's absolutely no way. And so, uh, for Hampton, I think Hampton just took the lead on this thing, you know, and said, hey, we, yeah, yeah, we out too. And, 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 and the, 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 the best part about it, or what I think this is going to lead to, is that maybe the, the MEAC and the SWAC will look at Hampton and, and be like, well, maybe we need to do the same thing, you know, because somebody needs to. It, you know, like, it's, it's crazy because we live in a world where everybody want to be first in certain stuff, but don't nobody want to be first in the stuff that really matters. You know what I'm saying? Like, like take the lead. Like Morehouse got the Morehouse School of Medicine. So you know what? Yeah, I trust them. If they say ain't no football, guess what? No <laughs> football. I trust them over there. I mean, they got a whole school of medicine. So yeah, so Fort Valley, yeah, you just better fall in line and everybody else. So I think that um, I, I really think that it's, it's inevitable that we'll start to see more and more um, uh, cancellations. And it's only right. You know, it, it's only right if, you you know, some of these schools were talking about sending the kids home the week before Thanksgiving and, and, and they not coming back to the beginning of February. You can't play nothing. You can't play nothing like that. No way. You know, how you going to play basketball? You don't come back to the first of February and March and, and the tournament. If you D2, the tournament starts in February, you know, your, yep. your conference tournament. So it's just no way that it's no way that, that you know, that is going to happen. They but they just keep on selling everybody that hope. I ain't buying it. <laughs> just like uh rob mac does it i mean rob calloway excuse me rob mac uh, there you go right there you go <laughs> there you go wrong he rob. Said, you said no part, part bernie part rob you right exactly that's, that's, that's why me. i was putting in there because you put him out there they had me thinking about that but the way you do it uh is straightforward like anybody else i would want to put this one context out there before we really close it out the show and and get ready uh to let everybody get back to their schedule. We thank you for all the fans that came out and joined us. One thing about the MEAC SWAC that we do need to consider is that is the MEAC SWAC challenge says they're still moving forward. So we'll see what that looks like. I think that's interesting. Are uh, you going to be there? You the money part. No, are I you going to be there, Dr. Kavir? Uh, are you going to be there, Mike Washington? You see what you see where I am right now, right? <laughs> are you where, where's there, Mike Washington at right now? <laughs> are you going to be there, Charles? <laughs> I, I will adapt to whatever the environment or calls for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, okay. I whatever. That, yeah. I think that's something like Mike would say with his military background. Yeah. No, Mike say we good. We good. I ain't worried about. We it. good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So with that, the other thing is that on a serious note, in terms of the swag and me, at one thing that you want to think about. Um, is you have those contracts between the FBS and FCS level uh, in regards to be made. So one thing that you probably have the SWAC and the MEAC looking at is letting the FBS lead the way, understanding that it's coming, and let them cancel the game. That way they can't try to come back and stick you for some money in regards to you canceling the game, which is starting to fall out with the Big Ten playing conference only, which I'm agreeing with Rob Calloway that doesn't mean anything. But it does get you outside of the contract with the Pac-12. So let the rest of them do their thing, sit back and wait, cancel the contracts. That way 
you're not hit with them trying to find a way to pull you out of some money that you certainly can't afford to. So it might be strategic in the way that the SWAC and MEAC is doing it. Just always trying to put in a different business perspective that people can think about in regards to how we look at things. With can we that, just be right? honest? MEAC, y'all, it's over for fam. Y'all not going to see fam again. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> <laughs> but don't cook me. It's over. Look, we'll see y'all in 2021. Thank you. Good bless. God night. Good, 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 God bless. Good night. It's over. It's over. Exactly. And that's Why? What, Why are we we'll doing leave, this to the people? We'll leave it on that <laughs> on that note. This is Dr. Kenyatta Kaville with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Professor Charles Bishop, Professor Mike Washington. And we're going to go ahead and get Professor Rob Calloway to get in here and think about there going go. back to school. I know he told me no, but. I'll have my way to get this done. We're we going to find a way to get these folks in there. We'll even do that with Professor Roy Evans because we are talking about Dr. Deville's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. And I am <laughs> the dean of the College of HBCU Sports. So since I'm the dean, let's just have class. Where's Charles? our intro, Rob? Where's our intro, Rob? Where's, the, where's Charles and me? Where's our intro? He cut it. Us? We got it. You got to blame this one on Roy. <laughs> I yeah, had it in the script to play it. We've been playing it. What are you talking about? We've Maybe been playing been it. That, y'all been saying that for the last three weeks. No, Mike, Charles. We, yeah, we had Mike, it. Mike, we, had Mike, it. Nobody, we play- nobody knows the miracles. It's Smokey Robinson and Miracles. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, it's been playing. They, Mike, they, we've been using it the last we've been using it the last two weeks for the show. They said they said they had weapons of mass destruction in Iraq too. They never found them. All. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I ain't heard so, that. Hey. That's, this is what we're going to do. Next show, we're going to make sure that we play that intro that Rob Calloway cut that includes Charles Bishop and Mike Washington. That is Professor Charles Bishop, Professor Mike Washington, to play this, uh, to make sure that they get the appropriate love they get. That is Dr. Bill inside the HBCU Sports Report. That'll do it for the show today. As we love to say, uh, break it up, come to us, course. Lecture. Lecture. This. 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 Miss. Miss.